Welcome to Mysterious Goings On. We're going to get right to the show after these messages. Well, here's something different. It's just me. There's no guest this week, or actually there is a guest this week, but this is a special uh, little bonus edition with just yours truly. I haven't done one of these in a while, and I hadn't really thought much about doing it. I did think maybe like right before the election, I'd written this whole uh, manifesto in my head about why you should vote a certain way. And then just got down to it. And I just figured, you know, the last thing people need is me chiming in. Everybody who listens to this show on a regular basis knows where I stand. So, you know, I had, and I had some good, good factual reasons, I think backing up my stance, but that's not the point. But uh, the other day I was talking to a fellow uh, writer, a colleague who I was talking about the show and about how it's just gone well, he said this, it's his, your show is just crazy. All these great guests, all these other writers, these creative people that you're getting on. It's wonderful. And I said, yeah, I, I said, it's frankly, it's gotten to the point where I have to kind of, uh, uh, throttle back. I have to put a governor, you know, like there's a governor on certain cars so they don't speed too fast. I kind of have to put a governor on my scheduling just to, uh, hold back the tide because, uh, words getting out and uh, a lot of, uh, publicists and publicity firms have got our number now. I mean, they literally call me from New York or, or LA saying, we've got this great, great uh, author. We want to get him on. We'll send you a, a book for review, blah, blah, blah. And it's fantastic. I love it. But it's really just been a roller coaster. And of course, you don't want the, the ride to end. And especially if you're trying to grow a show, you got to keep it going. But my friend said, you know, but come on, man. He says, I miss just having you sit down in front of the mic and update us on your life and your thoughts and um, maybe not having to listen to uh, an author. Uh, and he didn't say like having to listen, but maybe not listening to a guest for a while. And I thought, well, it's a, it was flattering. And it was also a good point in that I should check in a little bit and just, uh, you know, tell you that while we did start, I did start this podcast as a uh, a means of uh, talking to others in the creative arts, but I also did it to uh, promote my own stuff and tell you about where I'm coming from. So I am going to do that. And again, thank you, my friend, you know who you are for uh, venturing to say that. Um, I have missed it. Um, I try to do these pretty well stream of consciousness and not edit them. So if there's some ums and ahs and uh, I go off on some tangents, I hope you'll understand and uh, will uh, appreciate that it's just a little bit of raw uh, production here. I I think part of the thing too is it just for every episode. If you listen to Mysterious Goings on on a regular basis, you'll see that our interview episodes are anywhere from thirty minutes, which is really on the lean side, and that just depends on the author's um, a schedule and frankly how succinct they are. If we cover all their points and uh, I don't see anywhere else to go, we end it pretty close to thirty minutes or so, and then we go all the way up to. 50, 55 minutes, sometimes more. And, uh, and that's, that's by the way, not a necessarily a judgment on whether I find an author more interesting than others. It just could be, they have more stories to tell. They're a little more verbose in a good way, or they get me going and I'm, you know, excited and I start mouthing off about my life and talk about theirs. It just depends, you know? So I hope you like the mix, but, um, yeah, but you do the interview. So let's just call it an hour to get ready for the interview, conduct the interview, and then start uh, getting the files the right way. Um, Cause right when I get done, I get a file usually cause we record most of them by zoom. I get a file and I have to take that file and then convert it to an MP3. Then I dump it into an editing uh, platform where I do try to go in and zap some ums and ahs, or if there was a mistake or we had a glitch or I just said something incredibly stupid or the author said something that, or they guessed at me said something they'd like to take out. I'll go zap that stuff. And then while it's fresh in my mind, I take that finished file, I put it in the queue, I write up usually um, everything I want to say with links and all that about the episode because it's fresh in my mind. But, you know, I can always come back later and uh, put it in the queue. And as we are talking right now, it's uh, Tuesday, March 9th, and I, I actually am talking to you because I had a guest cancel 
which has only happened about three times in the past five or six years or is five years. I've been doing this since 2016. I can only count about three times that I can recall. And it was at the last minute. And she was a guest in the, the Middle East from Oman, a writer from Oman. And she just said something came up and that's fine. Uh, of course, if she wants to reschedule, she's going to have to wait a while because <laughs> uh, life goes on. But I, uh, I have this free hour and I thought, well, let's, let's use it for something here. So what I do, I do that. And I've mentioned how in my process and getting it ready. So right now, as we speak again, see, I told you, I'm not going to edit this thing. I'm just going to just blather. Looks like we have three episodes in the can, which just means recorded and ready to go. Um, one will be coming out this week. Uh, as I'm speaking to you, there's a gentleman who wrote kind of a Tom Clancy-ish book, Clancy -ish book that really has a very frightening premise that is real and scary. Then we have a, a really interesting guest um, coming up, too, um, in a couple of weeks, uh, uh, Hybrid Publishing and Local Lore. She's wonderful, Michelle Cox. I just love her. She, she is just a fantastic interview. It's so much fun. And, and speaking of fantastic interview and so much fun, Rachel Knoll, one of the few poets I've ever interviewed. Uh, you got to check in on that one. That's those are the three that are done. So you want if you're if you're listening, I'll assume you're interested in this. So here we go. So here's the thing. So remember, I have mysterious goings on, and I have PR, PR after hours, which is more of a straight lace business um, PR marketing management, you know, productivity kind of uh, show, which is a lot shorter. It's usually no longer than thirty minutes, and if it's just me talking on those, it's ten or fifteen. But um, com those two together, like today at 1230, I have an interview for PR After Hours. Tomorrow at 1030, no, 11, I have another, I have an interview with a creativity expert for MGO from Mysterious Goings On. And then at one, I snagged a really great uh, PR After Hours interview with a dear friend and colleague of mine who is one of the leaders in fr the freelance uh, work movement, the gig economy movement. I uh, she's been a client of mine and a friend off and on, Julie Cortez. So she'll be on. I hope I'm not jinxing all this. I hope they don't all cancel tomorrow because I said that they would be on. Um, and then, oh, I have dental work the next day. I'm looking at my calendar. And then I'm good. So then the following week, though. So there you go. There's, there's three more interviews I'm going to do this week, right? And then the following week I have, I won't go through everything. I've got one, two, three. Three more interviews for both, depending. I don't know. Uh, let's see. Are they for both shows? Yeah. These are all for PR After Hours. And then the following week, I have one, two, three, four, five, six interviews for MGO that week. Crazy. And following week, I have uh, one MGO, one PR After Hours. No, two PR After Hours. Jeez Louise. Or no, that's one. Well, shoot, it's a lot. <laughs> anyway, and then uh, there, it just goes on and on. There, there are there's at least twenty between the two shows. There's at least twenty uh, interviews that are scheduled. So I talked to you earlier about you know putting a governor on this thing, right? Uh, just kind of slowing it down. Well, you know, I set up my interviews through a calendar app called Calendly, and it. I had to go. I've talked about this before. I had to go when I first got it. I was excited because I was trying to automate my process because it, usually it's back and forth, several emails, and then I thought, oh, Calendly can do this, and I'll put a link where they can put in their information and their, you know, the topics and their website and all the stuff I need to get to, to prepare for the interview and to post in the show notes later, all that stuff in one spot. But here's the thing you attach Calendly to your, your Gmail calendar or whatever calendar you use. And I neglected to think ahead. And I initially just said, okay, you know, uh, nine to five Monday through Friday. Well, I had a couple of weeks there because I wasn't thinking very carefully where I just had stuff stacked up like crazy. I had just interviews just right and left where I couldn't get any actual paying work done. <laughs> Not that I had a lot, but uh, because of COVID, but still. So that got to a point where I thought, wow, I'm going to take this down to make it three days of availability with a two hour window per day with a maximum of two shows per day recorded. That's, that's what I did for three days. I did that for about a month and it was still too much. So now what I've done, I've got it down to two days a week. I believe we were just recorded on, well, uh, it, there's a few that have been scheduled out, right? But basically uh, the schedule is we record on Tuesdays and Wednesdays between uh, around 1030 or 11 a.m. and 2 p.m. Central Time. And we knock those out. And, and, and with a maximum of two interviews per day, I just can't do any more than that per day. I'm, I'm, I, I could, but my voice gets raw. My attention span wanders. I get tired. You know, all that stuff. It's just natural. You know, if you talk all day, can you imagine being a radio host? 
which I used to be, but I wasn't every day. I was once a week. I cannot imagine having to talk like the late Rush Limbaugh, who I disliked intensely for a lot of reasons, was very good at one thing. And that was just going off unscripted, entertainingly for three hours a day. I didn't find him entertaining, but you can't argue that the man was a champion broadcaster in that regard. Well, I can't imagine doing that. I think I think I could do that, but it would be it would be a lot of hard work because I don't know. I don't know about you, but I just get mentally fried after talking to people uh, for a few hours. If I like if I'm stuck in meeting hell, you know, for clients where we're in meetings for a couple hours and then I get a break and I have to work and then I have to do more meetings. By the end of the day, I'm so mentally exhausted. I just can't function. So I, I think that's how I'd be if I did this show every day. And that's how I was getting to be when I was stupid and didn't understand that I needed to not only limit the days that I recorded, but the hours and then make sure there was a buffer between shows and then limit the shows finally. Okay. Wow. <sighs> People who uh, don't care how the sausage is made are already turn- tuning out of this episode. And I understand that. So what else? What else is going on besides me just loving, loving, loving and wishing I could get paid? If I could get paid to be a podcaster, if I could get paid to do this and just interview cool people, you know, that's why I'm trying to sell some advertising, hint, hint. That's why I'm trying to get sponsorships, hint, hint. That's why I've got links where you can donate to the tip jar, hint, hint, all that stuff. If I could do this for a living, a reasonable living, I would. I love it so much. And uh, I get a few backhanded compliments from friends and family who finally listen to an episode or two. And they're like, wow, that's that's better than I thought it would be. And I'm like, well, thank you. That's uh, that's mighty kind of you to say. But I know what they meant. They just mean there's people who are not into podcasts who don't listen very often. It's kind of like 10 years ago when everybody was like, hey, would you read my blog? And, you know, a lot of the blogs just weren't very good. And there's a lot of podcasts out there right now that aren't very good. And there's a slight barrier to barrier to entry for a lot of people. who, You know, not you. You're listening to a podcast, which reminds me, if you're listening to a podcast, then you know how to subscribe to a podcast. And I hope you're subscribing to this one, please. And that's not even a hint. That's a direct ask. Please subscribe and rate and review. There's always a link in the show notes that explains on uh, MGOPod.com how to um, rate and review the show and a five-star review would be tremendous. Anyway, I, uh, I, I understand that people just, a lot of people, it's like the same people who, uh, it's to me, it's like the similar situation as people who like, they'll only read books that are on the New York times bestseller list, or they'll only, you know, read something or they'll only go to a movie that that's been reviewed favorably by whoever the, the review movie review du jour maven is these days i mean for me it was siskel and ebert back in the day of course they're both gone uh even though ebert's website still has a lot of reviewers um or they go to rotten tomatoes and they look at the aggregate you know people need an imprimatur of uh establishment approval i think to um a lot of people not all obviously not you folks obviously but uh a lot of them need an establishment uh, credential to go do that. Otherwise you kind of get patted on the head. It's kind of like when I first uh, came out with my independently published books, patted on the head. Oh, isn't that nice? Couldn't get published by a real publisher. Oh, you know, that kind of stuff, which I'm not going to lie. It was galling. It was galling for a couple of reasons. It was galling because my work's as good as anybody else's, but you know, there's, there's competition, there's gatekeepers. Um, there's just so much that goes into it, but, um, I like so many other independent authors decided my work's not going to sit in a drawer, you know? I, I make a pledge to my readers that I'm going to write as best I can. And I'm not going to turn over something or publish something that's half baked or crap. Um, you may not like it, but it's my, it's going to always be my best work every time. And so it got, got old for after a while. And now I, I, I laugh it off. I, I mean, for a while there, I bristled about it when people go, Oh, self-published. Well, uh, you know, and even when I have a, a little, imprint Caroline street press with me now, not, not a big publisher by any means. Um, I just, just kind of wear it as a badge of honor. I, uh, I do so much work on these books and so proud of it. And so many of these people I interview are in the same boat. I mean, I interview traditionally published and God bless them. And by the way, when, uh, when we have the Michelle Cox interview, be sure to listen to that one because she's a hybrid uh, type. She's done both. We've had many writers who've done that and there there's pros and cons to all of them, but the, I think the stigma is going away on that. Um, there'll always be crappy books that are put out there because it's so easy just to upload a word file and a crappy cover and say, look at me, I wrote a book, you know, here it's on my bucket list. It's ticked off. It's checked off the list. You know, there's always going to be that. And there's always going to be people who get on a podcast and it's two guys going, you know, the show starts and it's going to be maybe a sports show. And and they like, Hey, welcome to the sports show. Hey, how you doing, Dave? I'm good. Steve. Doing all right. How was your weekend? It was all right, man. 
you know, what else? Well, I saw a movie and, uh, and they spend like 10 minutes doing that kind of crap. We're talking about the weather and then they say, oh yeah, we got a guest and then the audio is crap. And then I have a problem with those kinds of podcasts. I also have a problem with podcasts where uh, people do interviews, but it's very evident. They're just reading off of a piece of paper and not really interacting. And I can't tell you how many publicists and uh, guests who've said to me, thank God you, after the show's over, you know, we we kind of chit chatting after I turn off the recorder, you know, I've done so many of these where the, the hosts are just sticks of wood and they don't vary outside the questions that have, they've lined out to ask. And it's not a conversation. It's, it's like, yeah, well, I, I couldn't do that. That just bores the hell out of me. I don't want to listen to that. And I damn sure don't want to produce and record and host that kind of stuff. So speaking of my writing, wasn't that a great uh, segue, folks? Speaking of my writing, I wanted to let you know where things are. Two things. One, the uh, the next and possibly, yes, last book in the John Pilot mystery series, uh, it'll be the eighth book, is about, I'd say, halfway done. The, 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 the draft is about halfway done. And the way I work, I'm working extremely slowly on this because of a lot of reasons. COVID was not a friend to me as my writing. I had a hard time focusing, enough excuses. Just didn't get it done. I have that work and a lot of my work is writing. And it's, for me, that muscle gets worn out pretty quick. I mean, I'm good to write about four or five hours a day. And if I spend those hours writing for, for work, writing content, writing press releases, whatever I might be doing, it's hard for me to stay in this chair and start over and start writing about John Pilot and company. Although I got to say, it's a delight once I get into it. It's just, I dread it because I'm just, that muscle's tired. That's why I've been writing a lot more on the weekends. It seems like I can come in here on a Saturday, you know, and just close the door and it's like, it's wonderland. It's like, you know, I don't have to worry about answering the phone. I don't have to worry about checking email. I can just write. I can just inhabit those characters and catch up with those characters and they take me where they want to go. I love that. And I'll do that on a Sundays as well. But my process is to get the draft done. Actually what I do, I'll just tell you real quick, if you're interested, if you're not fast forward or you can always turn it off, but here's what I like to do. When I write, I get that draft on the paper. I don't worry too awful much about plot or anything. And I'm a pantser anyway. I, I have an idea for a book, usually a concept, a direction. And then I just, start writing. I'm not good at outlining stuff and I don't stick to outlines anyway, because I let the characters guide me. They decide where they want to go. And uh, so I will, I will knock out the story. And usually that's anywhere from 40 to 60, 65,000 words just depends. I've usually closer to 60,000 words, 62,000 words. Although pilot shadow, my last one was more of a novella, very smaller, like a 25, 26,000 word book. But typically I'm writing that direction, a couple of hundred plus pages. Um, that's, that seems to be my sweet spot for my attention span and for my readers. Um, so that's what I do. I get that on the page and let's say I write anywhere from a thousand to 3000 words per session. I need to be able to write a thousand words a day. And that's, that's a disciplined thing. And on days that I've scheduled where I don't have to do a lot of writing for work, I should be writing for John pilot. So I'm working on that. But I get it done, and then the next day when I come back to it, next time I sit back down, I reread it, make a few edits here and there, clarity, make some notes, and then I just pick up where I left off and start writing and get to a thousand to three thousand words, whatever I feel like again. And I just keep doing that, you know, wash, rinse, repeat, and keep doing that until I get the uh, draft where I want it. Once that draft's done, then it goes in a drawer, so to speak, it goes in a file on my desktop, and I leave it alone for a couple of weeks, maybe three. And uh, then I'll come back and I'll reread it, make notes and go, oh, okay, wow, that's terrible, you know, or, oh, that's pretty good. And I do that on every other page. It's good on every other page. It's terrible on every other page usually. And I start working on it. Well, how do I fix this? Or if the story is just crap, if it's just, to me, it doesn't move me. It's too slow. It's, it's not interesting, whatever. I go back and I, I fix whole big chunks of it and uh, keep going. Or if it's going really well, which has happened a couple of times, I got to say my second book, Pilot's Key, my first book took me over a year to get done, basically. Pilot's Key took me three months for the draft. I think another three or four months rewrites and edits. And it was pretty well out there. I think the book was, don't quote, well, you can quote me, I guess. I might be wrong. I think it was a good six months or so. Six, 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 seven months, maybe. And then it was done. This one's way longer than that. And it seems like it takes me longer with every book. I guess I'm because I'm getting old, too. Um, which is normal, I think. Uh, there's only so many good years in a writer, in my opinion, and then there, there's a declination. But um, also with me, there's 
there's just the topic of, you know, of, of the series and all that, which I'll get to in a moment. But anyway, so I will get that done. I will get that second draft done. And then I'll do what I, I'll put it away for another few days and then I'll go after it again and I'll just do what I call a polish. And by then it's ready to be sent to Robert, my editor, who spends a few weeks on it and, you know, he tears it up, makes suggestions. He doesn't just edit. He's not a copy editor, just, you know, finding grammar mistakes and crap like that. I mean, and I don't really need that that much. Uh, I'm pretty practiced after writing for over 30 years, but also there's programs, grammar pickups that word, word, word will pick up and all that stuff. Um, but then he, but he also looks at, uh, you know, plot issues and logic issues. And he remembers enough usually about the other books that preceded it to make sure that I'm staying within canon, keeping it all legit in that way, making sure that, you know, John Pilot uh, uh, doesn't have a, a sister because he said he only had a brother, you know, and I can't just be like Star Trek and walk in. Hey, Spock, you have a brother. Oh, and 20 years later, Spock, you got a sister nobody knew about. I hate crap like that. So he helps me make sure I'm there with that. And I also have some really good beta readers to do the same. And so when that's done, he turns that back to me. I can accept or reject the changes, polish it up, get it done. And at the same time, I've already got a title picked out, which I don't reveal to the public until we're about ready to launch. And then I turned over to Jason. I say, this is the, the title. This is what we're, where we're going. And I just I don't tell him much because he doesn't have room. It's a cover. He doesn't have more room to put more than one or two concepts in there. And then he goes to work. He works pretty quickly usually. And he and I are pretty simpatico. I think we've only really butted heads once. And that was on the, the book I did with my grandpa, uh, the cover for that one. Uh, I wanted something that was a lot more involved than he thought it needed to be. And he was ultimately right. I mean, my concept would have been great, but I, it would have cost too much and all that. But uh, he was ultimately right. He did a beautiful, beautiful job on Big Cabin and Dispatches from the West. Um, so he gets that done. And then we uh, get it ready to go. Now, one thing I do plan to do this time, I don't plan to just dump it out there. I do plan to... Um, make available some reader advanced reader copies arcs i want to make some copies available to a number of you listeners uh, i mean seriously anywhere from five to ten of you would be great to beta read it and come back at me and just uh, maybe i offer it to you with a questionnaire you get the book and then i ask you for honest opinions and then i ask you if you like it to give me a quote that could be a blurb on the back cover, that kind of thing. And that seems to be the direction I'm going to go. And I'm going to do some pre-ordering too. I want you guys to read it first, you five or 10 of you, whoever wants to do it. And then whoops, somebody's calling me. See, I'm not going to edit that out. All right. Anyway. Um, so you guys will get some uh, advanced beta readers to do this and give them, I'll give everybody like 60 days, 90 days, whatever they need to do it. And uh, towards the end of that process, we'll go ahead and start a pre-order on Amazon and, um, get some of those sales knocked out so that by the day we actually officially launch, we've already got some sales made and we can make more of a splash that way and sell more books that way. So that's the plan. Again, I'm talking to you in March, uh, March 9th, 2021. And my, you know, of course, man plans, God laughs, as has been said in the John Pilot books before, but uh, whenever John Pilot wants to plan something. So that's the plan. I, my friend, Michael Zufa, who's been on the show, the constant reader, he's like, I'm not going to pin you down on the exact date, but is the pilot book coming at least this year? I think he asked me and yes, it will be this year, whether it's uh, middle of summer or early fall. I don't know, but with everything all included, it, it shouldn't be any later than fall. I really don't think it should be. It just depends on how quickly my editor can work and how quickly I can get it all on paper and sent to him and how quickly uh, my arc readers can get through it. And we'll just see. So I want to tell you this real quick while you're listening, if you are interested and I'll, I'm going to, I'll ask plenty of you, but if I don't ask, don't be offended, please. And you can ask me first, if you're interested, if you want an art copy an advanced reader copy, all I ask is you get it for free. It will be a PDF. I'll email it to you. Um, it won't be printed, uh, obviously, because it's not in print yet. Um, you'll have to read it on your laptop or put it on a Kindle or a, or a tablet, but that's however you want to do that. I mean, I might be able to figure out different uh, uh, formats. I'm not sure about that. I'll look into that. But I will get it to you and just ask you to agree to read it in, within 30 to 45 days, maybe. I mean, I, ideally, 30 would be great. And my books are pretty quick, quick reads. But ask you to read it and then get back to me with your honest um, thoughts on the book. Any, any mistakes you found or questions you have. But also then just based on the read, even if there are problems with the book, just 
give me a blurb of, about what you did like about it. I mean, I think that would be a hoot and helpful. Um, if you look at the series now with the wonderful covers Jason did, you'll see there are, there are Amazon reviews quoted on every back cover. And we're going to do the same format, but it'd be great to get some reviews ahead of time on this book so that when it's published, it's ready to go. And uh, we have that set. So if you are interested, I'm going to give you my uh, uh, personal email, folks. So here it is. I get spam anyway. So here it goes. Alex, A-L-E-X at A-L-E-X-G as in green, wood, P as in public, R as in relations.com. That's Alex, A-L-E-X at Alex, G, P-R.com. Email me, subject line, ARC, A-R-C, and then just say, hey, I'd love to get a copy of the next pilot book um, to help you, uh, you know, help make sure it's as best it can be and offer you my thoughts. So here's the thing. You have to agree to a couple of things, though. First thing you have to agree to is you will not you will not reveal to others the title of the book. You will not uh, you will not share this uh, copy with anybody without asking me first because I am, I'm going to limit it to just a few people. Like I say, five is five would be grand, ten would be incredible, but I'm I'm probably going to keep it to five five ish. And who knows? There may not be five people on the whole planet who want to read it ahead of time anyway. But <clears throat> you have to agree to keep it to yourself. If you do want to read it or you have a friend and think they liked it, just let me know and I, I'll, I'll be cool. I just, I want to know who's got the manuscript and you agree obviously not to uh, upload it to the web or anything like that. And yeah. And all you thieves listening out there, are you, you can't upload it and put your name on it. You know, some book called uh, pilots class, but you take out the apostrophe and it's Pilates class. Yeah. See, I see how you're thinking. I get you. So if you're interested, Alex at alexgpr.com. Um, and I'll be taking down people's names. I'll be taking names. I'll be taking down your names and, and email addresses and all that. And and your format, whatever format you prefer. And uh, when they're, the manuscript is ready, I'll fire it off to you. And again, I ask you to obviously read it, protect it, um, and answer a brief questionnaire about it at the end. And uh, then um, what I will also do is all my beta readers will get an autographed copy of the final printed book. Now that'll be months down the road, but to thank you for your work and to thank you for your honest uh, opinions, hopefully they're, hopefully the book's good and you have good things to say. I will send you a copy of the paperback autographed uh, from me to you. So that's the big thing on the books. Okay. That's the thing. If you want to get in on this now, never say never again, as Sean Connery learned. Uh, but uh, look, probably going to be the last pilot book. And I know you're, you're shaking your head going, whatever, you know, and I know you hear that from me a lot, <sighs> but I think it's time. Um, you get in the middle of these, the series that really was supposed to be a one-off book that became a trilogy that was supposed to be done. And then it just, I kept getting pulled back, kept getting pulled back. Not, 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 not just by requests from, from readers, which there were plenty, but just me, I miss these characters, but now I'm finding it. It's at a point where I think, though, pilots, the pilot series, which I adore, is my is is just is my baby, always will be, and I reserve the right to come back to it, I guess. But I think it's kind of like a stopper in a bottle for me right now. I want to write other things. I have a horror novel I've got in mind. I really do. I have a serious, uh, uh, seriously scary horror novel I want to write, but I just don't. I don't have the mental focus to. I don't know. It's weird. If I have something hanging over my head, and I always feel like John Pilot's hanging over my head like Simon's hanging over his shoulder, you know? I just feel like I need to get this book out, end it on a note where it's pretty final. Maybe not final like dead final, but final. And then get on with some other stuff. And I have thoughts about pot potentially trying to go the traditional route. I don't know. I don't know. Um... I talk about that a lot with Michelle Cox, which you, her interview comes out in a couple of weeks. Be Please subscribe and you won't miss it. Um, I talk about that, how she's the same way. And we would love it if, you know, these, these books that we kind of put out in a hybrid way can be our back catalog down the road. Maybe we write a really good book. We get traditionally published with an agent helping us. And then down the road, you know, maybe there'll be interest shown in these. I don't know. Could be a pipe dream. But uh, there's a lot of things I want to try. 
And that was the path I was on in 2008 when I first was pitching uh, the first book, Pilots Cross, to uh, agents. And I had some strong interest in the economy crapped out. And I just decided I, it, after querying 100 agents or so and getting about three of them who were interested, one of them very interested, and then she had to back off because she said the economy was tanking, if you remember 2008. And, and then I had a kid born that year, and I just so much happened. I'm just like, oh, you know. I'll just go on my own, but uh, I don't know. There's something, some part of me, I think a lot about my grandpa who was traditionally published for over 50 years. I, I think there's some of that in me too, and I want to see if I can try it. Who knows? I may get into it and realize, not for you, buddy. You're just going to have to publish it yourself, and we'll go from there. So those are some thoughts. i uh, probably going to have to uh, take a little break here, but I'll be back in a minute. Hey folks, we're going to take a quick break in the episode. I probably mentioned here and there that I have another podcast called PR After Hours. PR After Hours is basically an after hours virtual lounge where public relations, marketing, and general business professionals get together and have a laid back conversation about what they do and how we can help each other. It's great tips if you're running a business or if you're part of a PR or marketing team or you own your own business. I guarantee you'll learn a lot of stuff. It's a twice weekly show. We've been doing it for a year now. Very proud of it. And you can get it right here on Anchor FM or pretty much wherever you get quality podcasts. But if you want to learn more information about PR After Hours, please visit PRAfterHours.com. I hope you'll check it out. It's a little bit different vibe, obviously, than Mysterious Goings On. But also, I think, you you know, if you're not careful, you might learn something and have a laugh or two as well. Thanks so much. Again, that's PR After Hours on Anchor FM. Been there, done that, got the t-shirt, huh? Not quite Mysterious Goings On, listeners. You probably haven't got the brand new Mysterious Goings On official t-shirt. This is a quality, quality cotton t-shirt coming in a premium unisex tee version and a women's slim fit tee version in all the sizes you could possibly need. These are great quality shirts coming in a variety of colors, including dark heather gray, black, charcoal, maroon, and on the women's t-shirt, we come in dark heather gray, black, charcoal, indigo, and midnight navy. There you go. Check them out. They are in the show notes. The link is right there. They're being sold on Bonfire. Uh, They're typically sold in batches, and they'll come at you pretty quickly. All the instructions are on the website. The link is in the show notes here or at mgopod.com. Again, show the world well at least show the world on zoom or show the world (laughs) when we can finally really get out and about show the world that you have some mysterious goings-ons of your own by wearing our t-shirt and help support this show thank you so much Welcome back. I hope you'll consider buying one of those t-shirts. And also we have tumblers and mugs and all sorts of stuff. There'll be links in the show notes. Just wanted to uh, tell you those help us pay for things a little bit and get the word out and stuff like that. And uh, um, we'll probably do some giveaways uh, down the road with uh, some of these things too. It's just, it's just kind of a process to do that, but uh, um, plenty of things to get shirty with and uh, plenty of things for your beverages to wear and all that. So check it out. And of course, there's always a link on amazon.com to go buy my stuff. Um, wanted to just, just a couple of housekeeping things while we've been talking. Uh, for just $1.99 a month, you can help keep MGO in production, bringing you the interviews, news, monologues, and more we have offered since 2016. And supporting is easy. Just visit our website homepage, mgopod.com, scroll down, and use our secure links to contribute via PayPal or debit card. You can start just a subscription, $1.99 a month, or give as much as you like. $1.99 is the basic uh, level, but you can give $0.99 if you want. Um, uh, Just just once a month for $5, $10. Anybody who gives over $10 will get a nice surprise, I will tell you that. If you give $10 a month for you know, let's say for at least more than three months, you'll get a nice surprise, I promise. Uh, but, um, 
really you're doing it because you like this show and you want to keep it coming. I don't want to make a Patreon thing out of this where, you know, there's all this extra content for people who pay and all that stuff. You know, I just want people who are enjoying what we're doing now, which takes me many hours and a lot of blood, sweat and tears to, to, to make. I just want you to, if you, if you're, if the spirit moves you, <laughs> if the spirit moves you, I want you to please contribute. You can also do a one-time thing. You don't have to subscribe. You can just send a one-time tip and just say, Hey man, Here's five bucks. Go go have a, a coffee on me or something. And that'd be great. But uh, I appreciate it. So also just a reminder, uh, check out my uh, public relations show, PR After Hours, which is available wherever you get your podcast. It's also on Anchor FM. And uh, I have a lot of fun with that one too. PR, marketing, management, productivity, a little bit of creativity. So we had some crossover too. We've had some guests that have appeared here on there. And I, have I had any appear on there that have appeared here that started there? One or two that started there that, that I think came here are going to come on this show too because of the creativity focus. But it's just so much fun. A um, couple of shout outs too. I don't say this enough. It's always in the show notes, but original, our, our theme music, Mysterious Goings On, is by Jamie Green, who's been a guest on the show. Um, and if you want your own cool score for your podcast or website, just contact Jamie at Greenhouse Consulting. Link is in the show notes. And uh, there's always a link to Jamie's interview on the show there too. And uh, so th those are a couple of the things I just, I wanted to say, you know, your financial support is important, but here's, here's two other things you can do. And there's, and as I mentioned this previously reminder, a five-star review with, you know, actually a worded review, you know, saying why you like it is, is huge with five stars. But if you don't have time for that, just a starred review would be great, but it helps other people find us. And the more people that find us, the more our ratings go up, the more downloads go up. The, the more it's easier for me to attract sponsors. And and I promise you, I, I don't think I'll ever get to a point where I'll have a million sponsors per show, but you know, have one or two uh, would be nice to kind of help pay for uh, microphones and, and advertising to try to keep building our audience up. I have, I, I was talking to you earlier as I started this conversation about that. And uh, so it's important that I just say that if you review us, it's a big help. If you can't afford to put anything in the tip jar, surely you've got a couple of minutes and don't call you Shirley, where you could just go in and give us a review on Apple podcast in particular. That's the big one, Apple podcast or Spotify, one of those two or both. Um, take you all of two or three minutes of your life. And it would be huge, huge help to me, but that's the thing we're getting back to. As I wrap up this, this conversation of one with you, <laughs> I'm interviewing myself here. It's just, if you want to keep the show going, uh, those are the little things that help us keep going. And it's, it's, uh, you know, as I began the conversation, I talked about how busy we are and we we're doing so well with publicists and with people wanting to be guests and downloads, but, uh, um, uh, there's always kind of an urge to like, something's got to give as you get older. And as, at least as I get older and as I have obligations to earn a living, but also obligations to get a new book written. And I'm putting literally hours per week, as I've told you into this podcast, but I, I don't want to cancel it or anything, but the urge was there, I believe it or not. And I did that before back in 06 to about 08, I had a political podcast that was, you know, one of the few podcasts out there. I was getting some, some top guests and the New York times, best selling authors, that kind of thing. And, uh, it just burned me out though. And it was tougher to make a podcast back then. It, the tools weren't there. It was all this stuff. It was harder to do. And it was it was really hard to get people to listen. Well, if I kept doing that show, if I hadn't stopped in 08, and let's say I just kept it going till now, that show, I guarantee you, would be making money. It would be, it would, it would just, it, I, I guarantee you, I'd probably be doing podcasting at the very least as half of my income, I believe, if I'd done that. Because that would have been 12 years ago that I, I kept going. So I have no intention of quitting uh, MGO. Uh, PR after hours, we'll see, but uh, because it's going great too. But the, the thing is we've got to build downloads. We've got to get more people listening. We've got to, we've got to kind of grow a little bit here because as I say, you might say, oh, Alex, the more you grow, the busier you'll be and it'll be tougher. I'm like, no, not necessarily. Uh, if we make a name, if we start making money, I can afford to pay an engineer to edit the shows for me. You know, that takes hours a week to do. I can maybe pay a publicity firm to start pushing things out and build the audience and me not have to worry about that. And I can just focus on the thing I love to do most, which is finding and interviewing great guests and just telling you about what I'm doing and spend a little more time focused on those things that I mentioned, like writing my own stuff and uh, that. So that's kind of my big plan. Doesn't, who knows if it'll work out, but that's why I just need you good listener, you know, who are, who apparently care enough to listen to this point 
to please review the show. Share it with your friends on social media if you would. I have a great friend, Terry Matz, who shares so many of our shows that she likes. She, I mean, that's what I love about her. If she likes it, she she pushes it out and tells you why. It's so it's such a joy and such a compliment. Um, those things are huge. Um, if you can drop a few coins in the bucket, great. If you can buy my books, it's great. The, go through the link that's on on every episode. It just says buy Alex's book here. Click there. You can go and you can buy all my books. Um, if you've got them in paperback, you surely want them in ebook. If you've got them in ebook, you surely want them in paperback, right? And I'll just leave you with one last thing I'm going to do, and then I'll be I'll I'll be quiet. Um, really thinking about revisiting audiobooks. You know, the first book is out in audio form. Thinking about uh, redoing the series uh, or st- doing the whole series. And uh, I loved our reader then; he's great. But we might go with a female reader. I'm I'm talking to. Um, Tell me how you feel about that. I'd love to know. You could put your reply in the show notes or you can email me at alex at alexgpr.com or just get on social. But I'm thinking very much about having uh, a reader redo the whole thing or do the first book again. And again, nothing against John who did a fantastic job, but just a consistent reader through the whole thing and uh, offer them on, um, on Amazon as well. So let me know your thoughts on that. Would are are you a big enough John Pilot fan where you'd like to uh, have them read on as an audio audiobook? I've given some thought to reading them myself. Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not. It's not like I don't know how to talk. It's not like I wasn't an actor for several years. I just don't know if it's if maybe somebody who's a little better at this than me shouldn't get in there. We just don't know. I I would tell you this. Probably this though. If we do move forward, we find a reader. And we're going to go forward and offer all of them. I would probably read one of them myself. I would probably read Pilot 7, the book of short stories. I'd probably read that one. How about that? Love to know your thoughts. All right. Well, the clock on the wall is telling me that my next interview for PR After Hours is coming up in a few minutes. And wow, I am uh, been talking for like, oh, I don't know, 40 minutes straight. So that's real good, Alex. Yeah, I've warmed up my vocal cords at least. Um, I hope I didn't bore you too awful bad. But, uh, you know. Some of you asked for it. You wanted to hear from me blab on. So that's what's going on. So now you know where we are with my book, where we are after my book, um, where I wanted, what I want to do with the series, what I want to do with this podcast. And uh, the last thing I want to say is, what, are, what do you want? Is there something I can do for you? Is there something the show can do for you? Is there something um, you're looking for? that this show can help you with. Is there a guest you recommend? Would you like to be a guest? All that stuff. You know how to find me, Alex at alexgpr.com. There is also on mgopod.com. When you go there, just go to there and scroll down. You'll see there's a header and then you'll see show notes. Show notes are just every episode. Then you'll see where you can click to become a supporter. And then there'll be, oh, by the way, the uh, Pilots Cross uh, uh, film trailer is on there. Um, and, and then there's also a shop where you can buy autographed books and merchandise. And there's a subscribe at the very bottom, put your email in there and you'll get 10%, 10% off your first mystery novels purchased when you sign up for our best podcast newsletter, which we're going to start the newsletter, um, pretty quickly, but you will at least also get notified by email whenever we have a new episode. So you can go there though. And, um, you can go click on about the show and contact us there. If you don't want to email me directly, you can just uh, drop us a line through that box there under about the show. Just scroll down and you'll find it. Okay. Well, I've had a lot of fun getting a lot of stuff off my chest. I hope it hasn't been too dreadfully boring for you. Again, if you want to be an ARC reader, let me know. If you have suggestions, let me know. I'm just, I'm open to communication here. But again, if you would share shows on social media, tell your friends about it, review us, rate and review us on Apple Podcast and Spotify. Donate if you can. If you want to advertise, if you're an author and you want to advertise, I can do a live read or you can send me an audio file you record on your smartphone. I'll put some music under it and we'll give you a commercial. You talk to me. There are ways we can do this. Okay. All right. I think it's time. I stopped talking. Thanks so much for listening to Mysterious Goings On. Don't forget we have a complete archive of all of our interviews, monologues, updates, live readings, dead readings. All of that stuff is available at mgopod.com. 
And of course, don't forget to subscribe to us so you never miss an episode. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, all the usual suspects. Please join us there. Again, don't forget, MGOPod.com also has links where to find me on social media and how to get in touch in case you want to be a guest here on the show. Well, I think it's time that I move on for this week, but until next time, keep reading.